So in this lesson, we're going to talk about immutable JavaScript patterns. And what I mean by that is understanding how it's more important to use immutability with our data structures, such as objects and arrays in a functional programming paradigm. Now, in the last video, we looked at using object.freeze. And in this video, we're going to look at mutable and immutable patterns and compare how they affect an array, such as the items here. Now you don't have this items at the moment. So if you want to pause the video, copy the array down as well. We won't type this out piece by piece, but go ahead and just pause. Once you've got that down, let's continue. Now, before I learned all these things about immutability and more sensible software patterns, I would be using things such as array push, which is obviously still completely valid today. However, the style of JavaScript that we might write might slightly differ. It might be that in one application using array push, is a completely valid use case. However, in an immutable functional paradigm, we might want to look at a better approach. Now, what we're going to do in this video is look at how to add and remove something from an array in a mutable and immutable fashion. So here we've got this constant of items and above what we're simply going to do is create a new item, give it the value of an object. Now here we're going to give it an ID, which I'm then going to assign a new emoji. We can then go ahead and give it some kind of name. And then finally, we can come up with a price. Here, I'm just going to use 299. So there we've got a new item. Typically, we would use something like array push. So we could say items.push, and we want to then pass in that new item. If we then check our console on the right, we have three items. If we hit save, we now have four items. So we have in fact created a mutation in our data structure. We've mutated items and added something to it by using the prototype push. And this has been in JavaScript for many, many years. So it's a common thing that we would typically use. However, in a functional paradigm, we want to treat things as immutable. So instead of using an items.push, what we would do is construct a new array. So what we can in fact do is comment out our mutable way of doing things. And we could say const the new items is going to be a new array. And what we're going to do is then copy in all of the existing items. And we can then simply just pass in our new item that we created above. And now when we log out our items, we'll see three followed by four. So if we check over in the console, we have three because that is our initial items array. And here we have four with that one extra object inside. So this is an immutable way. We haven't mutated our initial items array. And these are typically things that you'd find dotted around the internet on these new ES6 spread features, which allow us to quite concisely perform immutable operations. So this is why these new features have arrived to help us with these better paradigms and approaches. Now this teaches us how to add something to an array, but what about if we want to remove something from an array? What we could then do is in our mutable fashion, we could say our removed item. And here we're just gonna reference items.splice, pass in zero, and we'll just remove the first item in our array, which will then be this one here. So this one's going to be removed from item. We can confirm that by using console log. We can log out our removed one, but we can then also log the items. So let's check them out. We have one, our super burger. So that's the first item, which has been removed in our array. Again, this is mutable. So really we shouldn't be using this technique, but we're gonna show you it. So then we can learn the immutable way. And then items we've logged out, which now has two items inside. And what's interesting is our new items here isn't impacting the items here because we're not mutating or pushing anything into it. If we were to adjust this, you'll now see that our number two here will change to a number three because we've mutated that initial array. So you can see how by using an immutable fashion, we're not affecting any data, any references elsewhere in a program. And this is a very basic example, but it also demonstrates the power of immutability and getting a new copy of something each time. Now, what we can do to remove this immutably is again construct a new array. So instead of using something like splice, we could again construct the 
updated item. So here I'm going to create the updated items array. Now this is going to be done immutably by using items dot filter. Now filter is really interesting because even though it looks similar to splice, it's actually a newer array prototype method which returns us a new array, a new collection. And the way that we can do this is simply by asking for each item inside the callback and then we can say does the item dot id not equal a particular id. So above we used the index to in fact choose which item to delete which then goes ahead and removes the burger. So let's go ahead and take the id from here and add it in here as well. So here we're going to get a updated items array back. We can remove our removed console statement and replace it with the updated items. So here when we save things out we're then going to see our updated items here. So let's take a look and we can open this up and you can see that we have the fries and the drink because we've immutably updated the items and we know that we have used an immutable operation because we have three items in this array and the burger exists in there and it doesn't exist in our second updated items. So that's adding to an array, that's removing from an array. What I want to do quickly is check out how we can do this with objects. So here we're going to look at objects and how to add. What I'll do is actually create some comments here just to use as a reference. So here we've covered how to add, we've discussed immutable and mutable patterns. Here let's have a quick look at how we can do this with objects as well. So let's say that we have a new item and what we're going to do is simply just reuse this one up here. Typically with mutable patterns what we would do if we wanted to in fact add a price so what we'll do is remove the price from this one and we'll say item.price equals 299. If we console log that particular item we then see it in the console and everything looks great but again this is mutating our initial item so it might be better for us to in fact construct a new item. So here we can say item, I'm running out of variable names here, so we'll say item that is new and here we'll do dot 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 item and then we just simply want to add the price on the end as 299. So let's save this out, add it in the console and check it out. So you can see here that our initial item is not being touched at all, it stays as it is, we've commented out our item dot price the item that is new is composed of a brand new object and we'll talk about why it's a brand new object momentarily about identity and what we're doing is using the spread the object spread operator to pass in our existing item which will copy all of these properties into this new object and then we simply add any other further properties that we want on the end as well so that's how we can add properties to an object immutably in JavaScript what I want to do is talk about how we can then remove something from an object. You may feel a bit indifferent between this, but this is typically what we would also do. So let's take our item and we'll call this one the item to remove. What we'll do is add the price back. So if we do a console log, the item to remove, we'll just duplicate this and then in between, I'm going to actually use the delete keyword. So then we'll reference our item to remove dot price. So this is using a mutable fashion again. We can then log this out and just confirm. So there we have line 29, which is here. We have our full object intact. And then we've used our mutable method, which completely eradicates the price property altogether. That does not exist anymore on our object. However, we obviously want to use our immutable fashion. So how do we do that? Now there are a few different ways you can do this. The most concise way, and I kind of like this, is to use the destructuring syntax. So here let's say we want to remove our price from our item to remove. Now this is in fact assigning it, however we want to destructure it. So here we're asking for the price. So let's go ahead and just log in the price and just check that this works. So here you can see that we have 299, it's being logged out just before our object item. So what does that mean? It means that we have ID and name that still exist on the object but we haven't destructured it. So what we can in fact do is say dot 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 I am the leftover items. 
Now, if we go and cleverly log this, we'll log it at the end. We'll see something interesting. So we'll see that we have line 33 and line 33 here. We have our leftover items, which are in fact, because we've destructured the price, it's completely pulled it out altogether. And we're simply referring to the rest of the leftover items, the leftover properties that we haven't destructured. And this is a really nice syntax that gives us a brand new object full of everything that we've got left over. So this is a nice immutable, it's a quick, easy way. And I say that it might be confusing to newer developers. So if you do opt for this approach, and I would recommend it, then be sure to at least explain it to some of your coworkers. Now, the whole reason for adopting this immutable approach is to talk about something called identity. This is the cherry on top, as it were. So what this identity means is that no objects in JavaScript are the same. So for example, we have our item to remove. Let's just take that and say equals 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 our item to remove. So what's interesting, and you'd kind of expect this, is that item to remove our object up here. It doesn't matter what the object is or contains, but it does in fact equal itself. So what happens when we create a new object? So here we've got our leftover items. Let's compare it to that. So we in fact get false. And modern frameworks such as Angular and libraries such as React will in fact use identity comparisons to make change detection much faster. It's a lot easier to say, does this object equal this object? Yes or no. And if it is no, then we know something's changed because we've immutably changed it elsewhere. If the objects are the same, then we know that nothing has changed. And that's how modern frameworks and JavaScript can be written to improve the performance of your applications. Now, just expanding on this, we can in fact say that no object in JavaScript does in fact equal itself, which is kind of what we just said, but we can demonstrate this by showing you false and false for objects and arrays. No arrays are the same, no objects are the same, so we know that something has in fact changed, and this can really quickly be evaluated in your applications to give you a nice performance boost when it comes to state management. So that's it for this video. We've covered quite a lot of things. We've done adding from an array. We've covered adding to an array, mutably and immutably. The same for removing from an array. We've used the immutable method array prototype filter to give us a new array items back. We've looked at adding properties to an object. We've looked at removing them and looking at the immutable ways of doing so. For what it's worth as well, I might mention that when we use the spread operator, we are in fact using a shallow copy and not a deep copy, which means that any nested objects will still be referenced. However, we know by now that really we should be adopting an approach that leads us all the way back to using something like object.freeze. Then this means that when we save this, we're not gonna have any errors because we are not mutating our initial items. If we were, however, meant to uncomment this, we then start to see error because the properties object is not extensible, which means it cannot be changed. And like I've covered, object freeze works on arrays and objects. So I hope that gave you a good insight into why immutability matters and how we can adopt it with our functional programming.